Hello everybody and welcome to Storytime. I know that you've been looking forward to this. So have I. It's getting so excited now. Paul and Barnabas have just come back from their first mission, their first adventure, telling people all over what we would say today was the western part of Turkey about Jesus. And many of them became Christians and they started to meet together. Now, do you know what? The first Christians did not meet in big church buildings because they didn't have them. So they usually met in people's houses. Now, what happened when Paul and Barnabas came back? Well, let's put them over here. Here's Barnabas and here's Paul. And they came back to the church where they started from, which was in Syria, a place called Antioch and the Christians there were so excited to hear the news and the report and everything, all the stories that Paul and Barnabas had to say. Now there were people from all sorts of different cultures and colours and backgrounds and nationalities that were becoming Christians. You see the first Christians were from Jewish people but now God has opened the door for everyone to get to know Jesus. Now, what happens next? Well, over here is Jerusalem. Can you all say Jerusalem? Jerusalem. Fantastic. Well, what happened was when some of the Christian believers in Jerusalem got to hear that people that were not from the Jewish faith were becoming Christians, some of them were a little bit concerned and they started to do things and say things that were not right. Now some of them came up from Jerusalem without the permission of the leaders and they came to the church, here we are, where Paul and Barnabas were leaders and which they were part of and they started to talk to Paul and Barnabas and the others and they said this, they said that everyone that becomes a Christian from all sorts of cultures and backgrounds have to follow all the Jewish laws, tr laws, traditions, customs and rules. And one of them was circumcision. Now, do you know what? It brought the church into a dispute because these men, and they were men, wanted the other believers to do what they said. Well, it caused a bit of a storm there in the church. In fact, what happened was the church sent Paul to Jerusalem to speak to the leaders. People, I guess, like Peter and uh, like some of the other first Christians. And we put them up here. This is in Jerusalem. And so they had this big meeting in Jerusalem. It was called the Jerusalem Council meeting and they had a discussion and let's put Peter here as well. This is Peter isn't it? Now you will find sometimes that people look like other people in my story and but I'll tell you who they are. This is Peter at the moment. A bit later on someone that looks like Peter will be someone else. <laughs> is that okay? I hope so. So they had this big discussion and part of that discussion was this. Should people who become Christians all have to follow the Jewish rules, traditions and customs? And do you know what the decision was? Ha -ha! Can you say that? Ha -ha! The answer was no, because you see, it's not about following rules that make people a Christian. It's about putting our faith and our trust and our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing he's the son of God. Believing that he died on the cross to take away our sins. And you see those who were not Jewish people had become Christians by putting their faith. And they'd received God's gift of the Holy Spirit. And so they had this meeting. And they wrote down the things that they decided at the meeting. And they sent Paul and Barnabas back to their church. So here they go. Watch them go. There they go. Here goes Barnabas. And here goes Paul. Da, 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 da. Oh, we don't want to take Jerusalem with them. Let's leave that there. Here goes Paul. And they went back and they probably told off these particular people here who were trying to stir up some trouble, really. 
actually. So Paul and Barnabas went back and told, told the others all that had been decided at that meeting and a big letter was written and Paul and Barnabas were told that when they go off on their next adventure, that they're to take this letter and to pass on all the information. And what they said in that letter was this, that no, you haven't got to follow all the Jewish laws, rules and traditions, but it would be really helpful not to, when you sit down and have a meal together, not to eat certain types of food that might upset or offend other people. And also, of course, that we should live our lives pure and holy and that we shouldn't go off with other people's husbands or wives. And we should indeed follow, of course, the Ten Commandments and trust God in the way that we live our lives. And so that information was sent out. That was good, wasn't it? Well, if you're following this in your Bible, it's in Acts chapter 15. Right, what happens next? Let me show you what happens next. Well, Paul and Barnabas decided that they were going to go off, let's put them here, on another adventure with Jesus. They wanted to go. In fact, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back to all the churches that we visited the first time and meet all the Christians that were there. Let's encourage them in their faith. And then let's go to some more places where we have not yet been. Barnabas said, what a great idea, Paul. Let's go. And Barnabas says, let's take John Mark with us. Now, you might remember that Mark was, he went on the first journey, but he didn't stay all the time. He left. And Paul was a bit disappointed that Mark didn't stay the whole time. And so Paul said to Barnabas, no, I don't think we should take Mark. Barnabas says, I think we should. Paul said, no, I don't think we should. Barnabas said, I think we should. And you know, the Bible tells us that they had such a sharp disagreement. Now, is it good to have disagreements? Well, sometimes it's OK to have disagreements. As long as we all leave as friends afterwards. Well, we have to believe that they did leave as friends. But what happened was Barnabas, da, 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 here he goes. Barnabas decided to take John Mark with him. And he went off on a mission with John Mark. They went to Cyprus. Can you say Cyprus? OK, and Paul, let's put Paul over here. Paul took someone else with him on his second journey. He took a man called Silas. Can you say Silas? And he went off and he sailed away and they went off to visit the places that he'd been on the first journey. So absolutely out of that first disagreement came two special journeys and adventures of telling people about Jesus. So Paul goes off. Here he goes. We're going to follow Paul now. Da, 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 da. We'll take him down from over here, shall we? So yeah, off he goes on his second, which one? Second missionary journey. So he goes off with Silas. And when he was traveling, he had this vision. And in this vision, he saw a man from a country called Macedonia. And that's the north part of Greece. And in the vision, the man was saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, I've got a friend who is a church leader, a pastor in Macedonia today, and I call him the man from Macedonia. His name is actually Angel or Angle, A-N-G-E-L. And he reminds me of this vision that Paul had. When he saw the vision, Paul decided that God, the Holy Spirit, was speaking to him. And so him and Cyrus, Silas, they went off to Macedonia. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. Before they went to Macedonia, they visited a town that they'd been to before. And there was a young man in that town and his name was Timothy. Can you say Timothy? His mother was a believer and his grandmother was a believer as well. And when Paul and Silas met Timothy, maybe he became a Christian on the first journey. Paul decided to take him along with him. And Paul would become like a teacher and a trainer, like a discipler to Timothy. I wonder whether for Paul, it was a bit like the replacement for John Mark 
I don't know. I do know that later on, Paul called for John Mark and they made up if they hadn't done already. And it's always good to make up. But this is Timothy and Timothy will travel with them as well now. So they go off to Macedonia and when they're in Macedonia, Paul goes to the Jewish synagogue and he teaches about Jesus and he goes into the marketplace and he goes down by the river and he meets all sorts of different people and tells them about Jesus. Now, in a city called Philippi, which is in, uh, is in Greece, which is in Europe, there was a woman. Her name was Lydia. Can you say Lydia? I told you there's going to be lots of parts of this story, isn't it? hope you enjoyed it. This is Lydia. And Lydia was a believer in God. She worshipped God, but she didn't know about Jesus. Paul met her at the river. She was a business lady and it sounds like she was running a prayer meeting. So Paul tells her about Jesus. She becomes a Christian and she says to Paul and Silas, why don't you come to my house if you believe I really am a Christian now? And Lydia was one of the first Christians in Philippi. Isn't that amazing? So that's Lydia and Paul and Silas go to her house. Now there was somebody else in Philippi who was a fortune teller. Do you know what? It's not good to be a fortune teller because God tells us not to do things like horoscopes or Ouija boards or fortune telling or to have anything to do with the occult because it is dangerous. And God in the Bible says not to do that. But this woman, she was involved with it and she followed Paul and Silas and Timothy around. And she was stirring up some trouble, really. One day Paul looked at her and he cast that evil spirit out of her. And you know what? We believe that she became a Christian as well. The people who she used to work for, because she was working for some other people, were angry at Paul and Silas for what they were doing. They stirred up the people. They got the Romans involved. And Paul and Silas were whipped. They were stripped of their clothes. And they were whipped and beaten and thrown into prison. Look, let's put them over here. Let's put them that way around. There we are. Thrown into prison. So there's Paul and there's Silas. And look, it's a chain here. We'll pretend that they're chained up inside the prison. And um, when they were in that prison, they were chained up, they were bleeding, they were hurting, and it wasn't good. But the Bible tells us that it was midnight in the prison. There were other prisoners inside the prison. And do you know what Paul and Silas were doing? They were singing hymns to God. The other prisoners were listening to them suddenly, say suddenly, suddenly there was an earthquake. The prison shook, the chains came off of Paul and Silas. And into the prison came the warden. He's the warden. Let's move this lady up here now. This man, he was in charge of the prison. He came in thinking that all the prisoners had escaped. He took his sword because the lights had gone out as well and it was dark. And he was about to kill himself when Paul calls out and he says, don't do it. We are all still here. When the jailer heard that. Paul and Silas and all the other prisoners had not escaped. He fell down on the floor and he said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to believe what you believe? He had been so amazed at the way Paul and Silas were singing praises to God, even though they had been beaten so badly that that night he became a Christian. And the jailer and the jailer's wife, and the jailer's children, I don't know how many there were, but we'll put two here, all became Christians. And Paul and Silas baptised them in the middle of the night. They all became Christians. The following morning, Paul and Silas are still in prison. I'll tell you next time what happens next. Hope you enjoyed today's story.